What's going on you guys? My name's Ty Knotts and welcome to Top 5 Unknowns. 5 Disturbing Prom Stories from Reddit. Number 5. It was the night of prom and me and about 5 other girls had left the venue and were driving around aimlessly, hoping to catch a party to go to. Every place we went to ended up being a bust or getting busted by cops, so we were heading to go hang out with some friends around 2 or 3 am. It's important that none of us were inebriated in any manner. So by this time of night the roads are completely empty and it's incredibly dark as the car had broken high beams. The driver named Key made a turn down a road and seeing as it was incredibly dark, briefly drove down the wrong lane. It only lasted about 5 seconds or so and absolutely no one was on the street so she just calmly corrected herself. Right as she makes it into the correct lane, about 50 or 100 feet behind us, a guy turns on his headlights and lays on the horn. It seemed like this guy appeared out of absolutely nowhere and I found it incredibly strange that he didn't have his headlights on either. So she waves her hand out the window and says sorry but the guy was just not having it. He immediately sped up and was riding on our tail and honking almost constantly, to the point that we were going around 60 in a 30 zone. He was in a huge black black truck waving a confederate flag out of the back, and we were in a tiny green Kia so we were understandably terrified. He ended up actually ramming our bumper a few times though not enough to really dent or cause any sort of real damage. We were debating what to do and whether we should call the cops or not, when Key decided to make a sharp turn and end up losing the guy in a parking lot. We waited super quietly under a shady tree, ready to drive off or call the police or both. One of my friends suddenly then noticed his truck parked a few blocks away, only separated by a few trees that were in the way so that we couldn't really get a good look at him. Now I don't have the best eyesight anyway but I could see him jump out of the car holding something in his arms and waving it around. Another friend with more gun experience than I points out that it looked like a shotgun. We then watch for a few seconds paralyzed in fear as he yells something along the lines of you girls better get out of here. After this we all wisened up, Key put the car into drive and we sped out of the parking lot as fast as we could. We were visibly shaken and immediately went home so that we could safely freak out on our own terms. Number 4 about a month before my senior prom, I was without a date and very angry. My mother's friend had a son that was in my grade level although we hated each other, but I ended up going to the prom with him anyway. That night, as soon as we stepped through the door, he ditched me, but that was totally fine with me. I worked the room and danced with some friends, but that's when the slow dances started and I was all alone. I started moving back to the lobby area but I bumped into this cadet from my class named John. John wore a very nice tuxedo, smelled like a flower bed and had on a very cute smile. I told him that he looked great and we started talking, as we'd never really had any conversation before. The second the slow dance was starting, he asked me to dance, but my date was anxious to leave. I gave John my number right in front of my date and told him to text me. In the weeks that followed, John did text me. A lot. At first he would tell me that I was pretty and I ate all of that up, but then it started to get weird. John would ask me very invasive questions about my sex life and sexual partners. When I told him I was a virgin, he told me that that made him so happy. I started getting these creepy vibes from him so I told him he needed to back off a little. And the next day in class, I looked him directly in the eyes and told him to go away. He looked sad, said that he understood and then asked for a hug, but I just walked away. Fast forward a few weeks, he continues to text me and I continue to ignore him. One night after graduation, I'm laying in my bed playing a game. I then get a text and it's him, so I just ignored it. I then get another text from him shortly thereafter that says, hey, I can see your house. Which window is yours? I immediately bolt up and close my blinds. I call him and scream at him that if he doesn't leave in 5 minutes then I'll call the cops. Thankfully he did leave and after that I blocked his number and told him that any further contact would be reported to the police. Thankfully that was the end of that. He still occasionally tries to friend me on Facebook but I never accept. Number 3 at 14, I moved in with my estranged father in a rural town in the US. One evening when my father was away on a business trip to the city, a man named Dan rolled up in his truck. He was a friend of my dad's and a local handyman. I met him at the door and told him that my dad wasn't home and to try back tomorrow. Seemingly out of nowhere, he then asked me, are you going to the prom? I'd noticed around this time why his smile and dark stare had always bothered me. He said, I'm sure someone has asked you to the prom. Um, I don't think so. I'm just a sophomore but I'm allowed to go with an older student, I told him. I bet you have lots of boyfriends, right? He asked. No, I just moved here. He didn't pick up on any of the obvious social clues I was sending him to leave me alone. I felt that sickness in my stomach and that nauseating and overwhelming sense of terror. While he never said that he wanted me to invite him in the house, everything about his body language and gaze indicated that he expected me to ask him to step inside. He was practically leaning right through the doorframe. 
He went on some more and ended up offering to take me to the prom himself. He then pressed again, don't you want a boyfriend? No, I said. Look, I don't take guys on dates who are older. Just high school boys. It'd be really weird if someone your age went to the prom with a young girl like me. I finally said something to the effect of, I'm going back inside now. Have a good night. I'm probably going to call my dad to find out when he's coming home. Little did he know, that was absolutely not possible. This is a time before cell phones are really common and I had no idea where my dad was. He then took my hand and kissed it right between my first two knuckles. I wanted to vomit. He said, okay, I'll be going then. I hope to see you soon, princess. I then turned and went back inside, but noticed that his truck remained out there for about 20 minutes. When my father came home later that night, I told him about Dan's visit. My father wasn't outraged on my behalf, perhaps sort of bemused. He was more angry about Dan being around the house at all. He said, I fired him last week and he knows better than to be around here. He should always call first. I learned later when my dad had a rule about the guys who worked on the property and why he asked them to call before coming over. He was mainly worried that they'd rob him. Because the guys he hired were all ex-cons to charge a discounted rate and most of them including Dan were on parole for violent crimes. It turns out that Dan had just recently been released from prison and my father didn't trust him yet. I don't know what his crimes were and I honestly didn't ask. I heard he returned to prison about a year or so later. Number 2 so in June of 2013, we had our annual prom night for Leaver's Day, which is a big thing in our school. We brought booze, played FIFA, and just had a good time until around 2 a.m. At this point, I was beginning to feel the effects of the alcohol, and as a tradition, we would always go for a late night and early morning walk just to catch a breath of fresh air and visit some creepy places. We always did this and nothing seemed odd, but this time, something just didn't feel right. My good friend later suggested that we go for a second walk, and everyone agreed. Now, where we live was an ex-mining town that took a huge huge hit during the recession and all the mines closed down. It wasn't uncommon to see derelict houses and junkies wandering the back alleys. We walked around the outskirts for about 10 minutes and with it being summer, the air was humid and slightly breezy. Me and my friend Mark were then lagging behind, barely seeing straight, when a black car drove past. Again, not uncommon as people worked late nights, except a bunch of clearly stoned, angry looking men that began screaming at us. We laughed and carried on, but they came back, so me being the confident, brainless idiot that I am under the influence, I flipped them off and shouted F you. As the car continued down the road, I kid you not, they did a full 180 degree handbrake skid and began racing towards us. We hightailed it out of there and into a council estate as we ducked behind some cars discussing our plan of action. By this point, the car stopped dead in front of the parked car that we were all hiding behind. We were all pretty big lads for early 16 year olds and were reaching the 6 foot mark. But I'll even admit, we all got frightfully teary eyed and our hearts sank when a chilling voice shouted, you better run if you want to see tomorrow. Of course we did and we all split up. For the next few hours, we hid on tennis courts, behind houses, in the woods, and anywhere that we could. But what chilled me the most was the constant echo of wheels spinning and cars running at high revs, circling around us the entire night. They continued searching for us for two hours, which leads us to indicate that they had bad intentions. We eventually ounced up our courage and ran as fast as we could home. And when we finally made it there, we were greeted by the rest of the gang who'd calmly been waiting in the backyard. As corny as it sounds, we all just hugged it out and breathed a sigh of relief as we made sense of what happened and how we could have died or been seriously injured. We didn't sleep at all that night, but thankfully we all made it home okay. Number 1 I met this guy about a year ago, let's call him Mitchell, at a meeting for our school's running club. He was pretty cool and shared my passion for fitness, so we ran and worked out together quite a bit. Mitchell and his family were very devout Christians, but I soon realized that many of the practices they engaged in were considered to be quite extreme. For example, when the news of Pokemon Go was first released a few months ago, I casually mentioned my love for the cartoons as a child. He then suddenly got extremely aggressive and told me that his father burnt all of his toys when he was a kid, and that Pokemon came from the devil. Another time, he didn't show up for school for an entire week. When I asked him about it, he explained that he had a vision that his family was in danger, so they all stayed home that whole week. Fast forward just a few months, Michelle asked me to the prom. Admittedly, I was quite put off by the idea, but reluctantly agreed because I couldn't bring myself to say no. It was his senior year, and I figured that the least I could do as a friend was to appreciate his invitation and help him with having a memorable and satisfying conclusion to high school. This was when things got really weird. With five days to go before prom, he started texting me every single day to count down the days, along with a reference to a Bible verse. They went something like this. Just five days to go. 
Can't wait for it. Hope you're excited too. Matthew 7.21 The verse reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Four days to go. The anticipation is killing me. Jude 1, 14 through 15. The verse says, See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and convict them of the ungodly acts that they've committed in their ungodliness. And of all the defiant words, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Three days remaining. Each day draws you closer to me. Jeremiah 19, verse 9. The verse reads, I will see to it that your enemies lay siege to the city until all the food is gone. Then those trapped inside will eat their own sons and daughter. They'll be driven to utter despair. Two days to go. Can't wait for us to get it on. Genesis 19.8. It reads, Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you would like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. The final text read, Tomorrow is our big day. Deuteronomy 22:29. It reads, If a man is caught in the act of raping a young woman who is not engaged, he must pay 50 pieces of silver to her father. Then he must marry the young woman because he has violated her, and he will never be allowed to divorce her. I was bewildered by why he would send these kinds of verses to me, because they really didn't tie into prom in any way whatsoever. And in hindsight, I'm kind of baffled that I still agreed to go to prom with him. But anyway, on the night of prom, I was able to avoid one-on-one -on -one interactions with him for most of the night by staying in a large circle of my friends. As you may expect, I just wanted to get home after prom and never have to see him again. However, since his father picked us up from the location of the dance, there was nothing I could do against their insistence that I have dinner with the family. When we got back to their house, and I'm seriously never going to forget this moment, Mitchell looked me dead in the eyes, smiled, and said, It's time. You've been chosen. I looked out the car window and saw his mother, sister, and brother standing in a single file line, holding hands and smiling at us. I immediately noped out of there and ran to the nearest gas station where my mother picked me up. I truly hope I never have to see him again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep updated with our videos.